All right, we're running a trap line. I've noticed listening to these videos that every time I start a video, I say, all right. So I'm going to try to not do that anymore. So I don't need to do that either. We're out on the trap line. It's Monday. Had an awesome day catch yesterday. Six coons, a coyote, and a red fox. I didn't get to remake all my sets yesterday. We had a family uh, Christmas get together. So by the time I got done skinning, uh, made it to church and, and all that. We didn't have time to get all the sets remade, so I'm remaking some sets as I go this morning. Haven't caught anything yet, um, but I still got some still got some good sets out. Uh, so one thing I was thinking of right here while I'm riding and don't have anything else to video just yet. I like to listen to podcasts while I'm running the trap line riding in general. Uh, I'm a big fan. Let's see. I listen to, uh, I like to start my mornings off with a family talk with Dr. Dobson. Um, but then I listen to a variety. I listen to Tim Ferriss, uh, Jocko Willink, uh, Pat Flynn with Smart Passive Income, uh, Meat Eater, Gritty Bowman. I got a long list of podcasts that I listen to. I really enjoy them. Uh, any podcast listeners out there, what do y'all like to listen to? Is there anything I'm missing out on? I, uh, that's definitely one thing. I like some I like some entertaining, you know, some of the hunting podcasts like Gritty Bowman. Uh, golly, what's some of the other hunting podcasts? But I, I also like to get a little a little food for thought, a little something to, to help improve myself. Zig Ziglar, I like Zig Ziglar. So. Uh, anyway, just wondering what y'all's thoughts were. Any other podcast listeners out there? Hopefully we'll have some animals to show too and this won't just be a podcast video. But so far, goose egg. Well, we didn't get skunked. You never guess what we got. This set has been hammering, hammering the coons. I just hope ain't no coon in it when the otter comes through. All right, got a few more traps to check. We're gonna wrap it up, but we got one critter in the truck. Let me know what y'all think about this. So I'm scouting these two ponds for beavers and otters. I'm walking down this dam and there is just slide or crawl out after crawl out in these uh in this grass most of them i mean that's a fairly good size and you can see they're digging in the dam a lot of them are, are small like that when you see like one two three four five six i mean all up and down this dam to me that that don't look like beaver or otter sign, just the, the sheer amount of them. I know a couple of these large ones probably are, but I'm kind of leaning towards muskrats on those smaller ones. What are y'all's thoughts? I'm no world-renowned muskrat trapper. Y'all know my specialty is coons, but uh, I think I'm going to have to put out a few 110s and see if I can't add a few muskrats to the checklist. We'll see what we get. All right, getting a new spot set up. Got these two ponds that feed into each other, and uh, there's beavers out here, and these otters as well. It's getting late in the evening, so I'm just trying to get the, the gravy sets in. You can see this darn slide across this dam is just ridiculous. War in, I mean, like I said, I'm setting the I'm setting the gravy gravy sets, no doubt. I got me a conibear in that slide. That slide's 18 inches deep, so I mean that's that's a no-brainer. You look here. The telltale sign is you got all these fish scales and crawfish parts. One of the best things you can do if you're looking for otters and you've got uh, and you've got ponds around, first thing to do, just go walk that pond down. Odds are if there's otters out there, there's gonna be a crossover. It may be light and faint, but look for that crossover, look for those those scat deposits and uh, start from there. The next place, I said another one, this trail is not quite as defined um on the on the top but you can see as them rascals start shooting down there i mean it gets it's worn out pretty good so i said another kind of give me cotton bear i tried to try to cover it up slightly see if i can do this without dropping my camera and myself in the water but you can kind of see there i got the uh got the cotton bear set up where it just makes sense for that otter beaver to go through one thing is it's 
it's been cool it's actually warmed up this afternoon into the 60s which is pretty darn typical for the south and broke down to the short sleeves but uh it starts getting warm and you start running conner bears for beavers you got a good chance of catching snapping turtles any turtles but snapping turtles in particular so just keep an eye out for that this is where that trail comes off the dam comes down through and right into this pond edge and that's 20 inches deeper better it that's deeper and there's a, there's kind of an undercut bank there so i put me a number five I put me a number five bridger right here in the dead center you can see where things are you've got really two locations you've got stuff crawling up that bank right there and this bank right here so i put it kind of in the center to try to capture both of those and then uh i got one more like i said just trying to get just trying to get the easy spots out now there's a lot of sign here uh, and then i'll add more traps as the week goes by and then the other spot you can see this trail this slide is just unbelievable coming down through here it's wallered out really good we may get that 330 conibear kind of sitting there there's gonna be a fat beaver sitting there in the morning i have a feeling but anyway uh Hope this will this will this will pan out, and we'll try to get some more traps out. Try to get some more coyote traps out later this week too, and and uh, keep this thing rolling. It's been a good it's been a good week, and I intend to keep it that way. Keep it going. We're gonna have a good season.